Hello once again, my people. It is I, Veed, and welcome back to Repeat. Last episode, our boyfriend's in a fucking coma. I am doing this the right way, yes. Yes. Um, <laughs> our boyfriend's in a fucking coma, and uh, I'm not here for it. Also, I got a new do. Like, she's not long anymore. Like, she's still green, but she's not long anymore. So, um... We're just gonna go through here, probably, hopefully not get emotional, but you know what? This is Shiro Koi. I've even direct messaged him on Twitter, or not even direct messaged him on Twitter. I still have to do that. I've mentioned him on Twitter being like, why the fuck am I feeling things? And he's like, that's just my job. So, um, let's get this shit started and hope that we don't feel things. All right. Sissel wasn't sure where the nagging feeling in his chest began, but he tried his best to ignore it. This time he was like the time this time he was spending with his family, he wasn't going to let anything distract him from enjoying it. Sissel smiled and tugged on his mother's sleeve as he left her uh as he leave her. As he leave her through Jerania's classroom. I think the word that you're looking for is lead, Shirokoi. <laughs> what is lead for five hundred? And this is the art room, where I helped Mrs. Corlise with a few of her sculpture classes. I didn't think sculpting would be very useful in the coronary stuff I was doing, but I'm glad I learned it. Cecilia stared through all the art pieces on display with a, wad with a wide smile on her face. Cecil felt his stomach flutter when Cecilia looked impressively at his own sculptures on the display. You've gotten so good since the beginning of the year, and you've grown a taste for architecture too, huh? Nice job, sis! Sissel's face flushed as he grinned. Thanks, Mom. Oh, God. It's, it still pains me. This is all in his fucking brain. Wait a second. Cecilia jabbed a figure at a particular clay model of Sissel's section. Ooh, girl, what's going on? That's a penis. <gasps> <laughs> so what? They're important for some kind of sculptures. Like, unless it's just a penis itself. Like... It's important for some sculptures, like, have you seen, like, the fucking Romans and shit? Like, damn. C Cecilia, what the fuck? It's okay. What? Oh, that, uh, I made that one. It's supposed to be a model of the Gherkin building from London. Cecilia nodded proudly. That's a penis. <laughs> Oh, girl, me too! Oh, girl, me too! Oh, when you're so bad at architecture that, like, you don't even know what you're making and it just shapes that it turns out to be a dick. <laughs> she barked a laugh at Sissel's red face as he dragged his mother out of the art room. Jeez, you're a grown-ass woman. Can't you be a little more mature? Does my job to embarrass you from time to time? W w whatever J shut the fuck up, Mom. Uh, anyway, let's move on to the next class already. Suddenly... The nagging feeling in his stomach twisted into a knot and Sissel doubled over in pain. What the fuck? Sis, are you okay? Sissel staggered onto his feet and nodded. Y yeah, D don't know what came over me. What the fuck? What the fuck? Ooh, his brain is shattered. Somebody puts fucking brain control on him. Fucking pay 800 life points, take control of his fucking mind. Mind crush! The world suddenly went white. He realized he was wearing his normal clothes, too. W what was going on? Sissel stumbled around fr frantically. Where was his mother? He couldn't see anything. He couldn't... R Mom? Mom, where did you go? Even he was surprised by the sheer anguish in his voice as he caught out into the empty white. His chest was racing with fright as he ran through the strange nothingness. He was just getting to know her. He didn't want to live without his family again. He needed to find her. I'm sick of waiting. What? What the fuck? Wait, hold on. Shirokoi, you cannot fucking d drop just like a double double fucking artwork piece of shit right here. What the fuck? A familiar voice suddenly echoed faintly through this empty world. Sissel turned around just in time to see a small figure running past him. Oh, it's little Sissel. What was that? The, 
out Sissel's Girl, I can't fucking breathe. <laughs> Sissel's heart lurched against his chest as he slowly turned towards the direction that the child was running towards. He remembered this. He remembered coming to this window every day long ago. It was a place of comfort that he had forgotten about. As he approached, he could make out a familiar figure behind the glass. Oh, is that where fucking is that where fucking Ginny comes in with with uh fucking her memory shit? He remembered now. What the fuck? This was the place they first met. What the fuck? What? <laughs> Ginny grew up in a room. Oh, look at her! She's so cute. She's so sweet. It was a plain room. With dull gray walls and shelves stacked with all the books she could ever want. Every day, she would make herself comfortable by the light in the window and read until the day was done. It was not as if she had anything else to do. Ginevra Corlise was a rather useless, defective girl. Oh, Gene uh, G uh, Ginevra. Oh, that's a cute, that's a cute name, bitch. Yes, fucking... I get why you're going by Ginny, but, like, that's a fucking cute name. She wasn't allowed to leave this room. Sometimes she'd look out the window and watch the people passing through the streets. Are we gonna learn about what is fucking making her sick? She'd often notice a small beggar boy, hardly older than she was, talking to anyone who would listen to him. Sometimes the grown-ups would give him some food. Sometimes they would give him some pocket change. But more often than not, they'd just ignore him. Ginny always felt a little bad for him, but there wasn't much she could do to help. She was just a useless, defective girl, after all. And she wasn't allowed to leave this room. What the fuck? Ginny! Ginny! Ginevra! One day, she noticed that she didn't have to. The window- What? <laughs> okay, hi, Sissel, how are you? The window slammed open. Girl, Sissel, you do not do that to some fucking- You, you do not just- simply open somebody's window and break in. That's called fucking burglary. <laughs> That's called breaking and entering. Hey you! Flower girl! Oh, okay. You can read, right? Teach me! What? Just like that? <laughs> Just like that? Okay. The book Jenny was perusing dropped from her stunned hands. <laughs> what? The little boy scowled and wiggled his little feet from his position on the windowsill. Jenny was- utterly bewildered and wonder what she was should do she had never spoken to anyone her age before uh shouldn't you ask a real teacher or your parents to teach you i'm sure they do a better job the boy's tiny scowl grew impatient don't have any and if i went to a school they'd probably send me back to the orphanage or some crap why can't you teach me oh sissel oh my sweet baby boy Oh, my sweet fucking baby boy, sweet little bean. Oh, he's so, he's so good. I see you in this window every day with your face buried in a book. You sure look smart enough to be a teacher. Ginny paused for a moment and took a look at the empty room she was trapped in every day with only books for company. She sighed and shrugged. Oh, Jesus. Okay, it's at least an... A reasonable hour for me to be yawning. It's 7.19 and I woke up not too long ago. Not like I have anything better to do. Alright, I'll be your teacher. The boy pumped a tiny triumphant fist in the air. Yeah, you fucking ghost thistle. Oh, jeez. Yes! Thanks, Teach. I promise I'll make it worth your while. Oh, even when he was little, he's... Oh, fuck. Oh my god, he's so pure. The boy's name was Sissel. He wasn't the brightest bulb in the box, but he worked harder than Ginny could ever imagine for someone his age ever could. Every day, Sissel would climb through her window and demand the next lesson for their, read for their little reading lessons. Sissel bashed his way through Ginny's books and workloads with reckless abandon. She couldn't help but feel a rush of pride every day when the little beggar boy thanked her for being sne for, before sneaking out her window. Ginny had never helped people before. One day, during one of their lessons, uh, Ginny absentmindedly asked Sissel if there was anything he'd wish for. <gasps> Any big dreams or big goals in life? Ooh! 
Yes, we're gonna get into his wish, bitch. Yes. Hopefully. Maybe. Sissel stopped chewing on his pen and grew quiet for a moment. Well, I used to dream about having a family. Ginny blinked, surprised. I used to think they'd find me one day and I'd be able to grow up like a regular kid. You know, with a mom and a dad. Then I'd go to school, get a good job, and live a successful life. Something like that. That was all it was, though. A dream. Oh, God, my boy is so depresso expresso. I just want him to be happy. Shirokoi, why the fuck do you have to do so much shit to this boy? Ginny glanced at her friend with worry. You don't dream of that anymore? Sissel suddenly looked at, uh, Sissel suddenly stood up and looked at Ginny with a mix of anger and determination. Oh, God, look at, look at fucking little teenage, fucking, look at little, like, 12-year-old Sissel. Or at least I'm assuming he's, like, 12 years old. Oh, God, he's so adorable. Sure I do, but what good is dreaming gonna do? I'm sick of waiting for something that'll never happen. I'm sick of waiting. Any old idiot can dream. Any old, in, uh, any old idiot can wish for something their entire life and hope that it happens. It takes something else entirely to grasp that dream with your own hands and work for it, than to fight for it. Nothing worth getting is just going to fall in your lap with no effort. Nothing's gonna just, like, fall right in front of you, just like, there's no man that's gonna fall from the sky, even though that's kind of what happened, but then, you know, you decided to go fuck up. <laughs> I'm saying is it's your fault? No, the Revenant just fucking hates me. <laughs> Sissel turned towards Ginny, a, a proud and grateful grin on his face. What can I do? I need to fucking stop. I need to breathe. <laughs> what can I do today to work towards my dream? I saw you. I saw someone who could teach me to read and help me grow into a better person, so I grasped it. Firmly grasp it! Firmly grasp it! <laughs> I'm gonna learn to read, and then I'll be able to take on better jobs and learn new things. Oh, God. And then there's fucking big boy Sissel, our fucking boyfriend. He's like 18, 19, something like that. And he's so pure, so innocent. So, I love him. After, after that, I find something I'm really good at, and I'll make a good life of it. Off of it. The younger Sissel grinned at Ginny, his face full of pride. And then I'll finally pay you back for the f uh, for your faith in me, Teach. I don't have a family, but I got you, don't I? Ginny can only stare up at Sissel with a dumb, happy smile across her face. Huh? T teach, are, are you crying? No, Ginny, don't fucking cry, I love you. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to make you sad. Ginny shook her head. She reached out and held Sissel's hand firmly. Sissel didn't know what to do as this useless, defective girl sobbed quietly into his arms. No, I'm happy. You made me happy. I'm glad I've got you too. What would I do without you? She would still be fucking stuck to that room to this day, probably. Sissel stared as the memory of his younger self slowly faded into white. Shame gripped in his heart and he stood by himself in this empty world. Sissel? Are you alright? Oh no, and now he knows that it's all in his head. Sissel took a deep breath and took and turned to face his mother's kind, worried face. He felt tears threaten to blur his vision as he tried to find something to say. Mom I think I, I have to go. Cecilia Bradley frowned with concern and placed her hands on his shoulders. So soon? Are you sure? Sissel nodded. His hands reached up and grasped his mother's. He didn't want to let go, but- Oh no! Oh, he's gonna be a sad fucking boy! <laughs> no! I've never seen this sprite! Oh my god, Shirokoi. Oh my god, Shirokoi, what the fu- Okay, so I just downloaded <laughs> like, just before recording the session, um, what is it, 0.6.6, .6, where he was like, it's not a big update, I just added some sprites here and there, this must have been fucking one of them, because fuck you, I don't want to see my boy this fucking sad, go fuck yourself, Shirokoi! <laughs>
<laughs> I'm just kidding. I love you. You're dead. Right, right. Fucking right there with the truth bomb. Yeah, no, Cecilia's dead. <laughs> the word left Sissel's throat as tears streamed down his cheeks. You're never- <gasps> No. <sighs> Go fuck yourself. Go fuck yourself, Shirokoi, for making this boy cry. For having a fucking sprite to make that boy cry. I fucking hate you. You're never coming back. I can't stay here. I've got people outside waiting for me. I can't afford to let them down. Cecilia Bradley's face softened. Her hands brushed Shissel's face and gently wiped away his tears. I know. She pulled Cecil close into one last hug. Cecil held her close, burying his face into her shoulder as tears continued to fall. For what it's worth, I'm proud to call you my son. Sissel smiled, wet tears rolling down his face as his mother slowly disappeared. <laughs> slowly disappeared! Oh my god, it's gonna fuck up Sissel when he wakes up. Her words etched into his heart. The white streamscape around him rumbled slowly as cracks began to form. Oh, hey, sis! Slowly, it began falling apart. He was ready to wake up now. I fucking cannot believe this fucking piece of shit right here. A low laugh echoed through the air as the words crumble apart around him. Are you sure you want to leave? You'll never see her again, you know. Sissel took a deep breath and faced forward with a determination he hadn't felt in a long time. Yeah. You've really grown up, haven't you? Uh, yeah, he has. And you know what, Remy? You can go fuck yourself. The remnant chuckled. A hint of pride in its voice. But the real question is, who took this perfect world from you? Who stole your childhood and this perfect life from you? What is the truth? Oh, Jesus. What the fuck? Hi. I crouch over here. Okay, now we're back into the real world. We can, like, relax for a little bit and not feel so anxious. Because if there's one thing that this game makes me, it's anxious. <laughs> I crouched over Sissel's bed and anxiously watched as Ginny and Bradley rested their hands on Sissel's forehead. Her eyes were closed in concentration as the minutes ticked by. The room was silent. Slowly, Ginny's eyes fluttered open as awoke from her daze. That's not English. Okay, 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 sure, okay. Did you do it? Did it work? Jenny rubbed her eyes and glanced at Sissel nervously. I... I think so? There was a groan as Sissel slowly stirred in his sleep. His eyes were still closed, but his face was agitated as several tears fell down his cheeks. Oh, and I just noticed that it's not raining anymore. Oh, God, I love that. The Black Lady of Bradley Lake lifted her hand from Sissel's forehead. He is waking. It will take several minutes for him for, to recover, but soon Sissel will be well again. She turned towards Jenny with a nod of gratitude. Thank you for taking care of him. Jenny smiled and let out a sigh of relief. Of course, it's the least I could do. I fucking, can you stay away for fucking like five minutes? The room suddenly went cold as a dark figure lumbered out of the shadows. Well done. Well done, Ginevra Corlys. You've done it again. We both immediately stood up straight and crowded in front of Sissel's in front of Sissel protectively. How the fuck do you know Ginny, bitch? What the hell do you want? Haven't you done enough damage already? The remnant cackled as he staggered closer to us. The problem was already there. All I did was point them out. As he came closer, I noticed he was carrying something small and golden in his mouth. What the fuck? Small and golden. Oh. Fucking Herschel's trophy. The remnant grinned and, dro uh, grinned and dropped Herschel's culinary competition trophy onto the ground with a thud. You'll need this later. Congratulations on waking your friend. I wish you all the best. <laughs> 
go fuck yourself. No one likes you. With another manacle laugh, the remnant disappeared into the dark. I exchanged confused glance with Ginny. Looks like there'll be more trouble coming our way. God damn it, I just want to spend like fucking 10 minutes without this bitch trying to fucking ruin our lives. It was another 10 minutes before Cicely finally opened his eyes. Words can never describe the sheer relief we felt. Jenny and I fussed over him, asking if he was alright, if he was hurt. Oh no, and now it's a sad boy. Cicel stared at us blankly for a moment, still dazed. Then the first thing he did was set up and pull Jenny into a tight hug. She was surprised at first, but embraced him with a laugh. He says, glad to have you back. Oh my god, he's, oh, she's so pure. She's so great. She's such a good bean, and he's also such a good bean. These are my children now. You feeling all right? I, I'm just glad to be back. It's nice to see you, Teach. Oh, and V2. A wave of relief washed over me as I rested a hand on Sissel's shoulder. I did my best to bite the back the uh, involuntary bitter feeling in the back of my head before smiling at him. Yeah, I, I mean, like, I get it because we like him, so it'll have, like, the idea of us being bitter, being like, we couldn't help him we legitimately couldn't help him with anything but that's only because we've known the fucker for two weeks basically um so i mean like whereas Ginny knew him for almost his whole entire life probably like half of his life and yeah like i i, I get where the game's coming from being like we're probably just like a bitter bitter bitch but guess what suck it up buttercup it's not always gonna be a fucking about you yeah, we're the main character, but so what? <laughs> you nearly drowned in a lake you and were unconscious for almost two whole days. Are you sure you're alright? Herschel's getting a doctor to check on you right now, but... Oh! I guess it's still raining. <laughs> I glanced out the window and the violent rainstorm screeching outside. Looks like it'll take a while for him to come back. Oh, it, I thought it was still not raining. I should probably send Herschel a text message to let him know Sissel had woken up. Sissel flinched at the motion uh, at the mention of Herschel and glanced at the door. Is is Boss still mad at me? No, of course not. You should have seen him. He was so worried about you. Herschel fussed over over and took care of you the entire time you were unconscious. Sissel grew very quiet and and hung his head low. Oh, right boss he's my uncle yeah wait what <laughs> all right jimmy doesn't know this shit i found out this shit from context clues and then i forgot that jimmy wasn't there the whole time <laughs> jenny and i gaped at it oh wait i my character too wait what fucking yuka too oh yeah i learned that our name is actually yuka so that that Fun fact. When did this happen? Sissel chuckled, but there was a heavy look on his face. I guess we have a lot to catch up on, huh? Oh, and then a fade to black, and then coming back, so in that way we don't have to go through that whole explanation. We explained what had happened since Sissel passed out. Our research in the library, finding Sissel drowning in Bradley Lake, and Herschel nursing him back to health. There was no mention of the remnant ripping Echo apart or the black lady of Bradley Lake aiding us. The mere idea of it sounded too crazy. I see. Don't just I see. Tell us what you meant when you said Herschel is your uncle. Oh, right. He sounded distracted. I, um, kind of found a VHS made by my mother when I was a baby. Herschel was there recording the video and laughing with us. My mother is Cecilia Bradley, and it turns out Herschel is my uncle. Wow, that's a pretty big bombshell. How, how does that make you feel? Oh, look at Ginny being fucking uh, super high school level therapist. <laughs> I'm sorry, I've been playing a lot of Danganronpa. Expect that in October, bitch. Ooh. <laughs> 
Yikes, that's the most therapist thing I've ever heard from you. Yeah, it is, bitch. Like, even like I said, I was like, that's from some kind of ultimate therapist shit right there. Gener uh, Ginevra Corlees, therapist extraordinaire at your service. Seriously, though, are you doing all right? This kind of revelation isn't easy to process. Cecil's eyes stared into the distance in an unsettling frown. Don't get me wrong, it's nice to know my mom didn't throw me out like trash, but... Has Boss Herschel always knew about this? He had to at least suspect it I was his nephew. It explains why he took care of a random kid off the street. But why didn't he tell me? There was a suspiciously bitter edge to his voice that made me more than a little nervous. Well, hey, orphan boy, it turns out I'm your uncle and your mom is dead isn't something that you can just announce out of the blue. Oh, we're not making this better. Maybe Herschel just didn't want to make things awkward? Maybe. Oh shit, hi! <laughs> the attic door suddenly slammed open as a rain-soaked Herschel stumbled inside. Oh god, Herschel, you need to go fucking take a hot shower and then go take a nap. <laughs> I, I got your text. See... Oh, right. Hold on. I need to go back to my high-pitched jersey. Hershey, uh, Herschel's face lit up as he bounded into Sissel into a crushing and wet bear hug. You're awake! Jesus, fantastic Christ, don't scare me like that again! You have any idea how worried I was? Herschel squeezed Sissel so close to his chest, sighing with relief. Sissel didn't hunt back immediately. It took a few moments before his arms rested suspiciously on Herschel's back. For a good reason, because he just... Sorry about that. It didn't mean to worry you. No, no, no! I should be the one apologizing! I... Herschel stuttered and struggled to compose himself. What I meant to say is... uh, Well, first and foremost, really sorry for blowing up on you the other day. I just... Got real angry and said things I couldn't take back. You didn't deserve any of that. About that. Mind explaining why you're so twitchy about your culinary competition winnings? You've been very... shifty about the whole subject. Herschel's ears twitched as he sat back nervously. It's the... a long story. I've got time. Oh, Sissel is fucking serious! He is not taking any of this fucking shit anymore! It sounds like you've got a lot to tell. Uncle. W what? <laughs> How did you find out? <laughs> you did promise to explain everything once Sissel woke up. Don't you want to set things right? Ooh, he is fucking bitter. Ooh, he is fucking a bitter bitch, and I'm fucking here for it. Yes. <laughs> well, yeah, but Herschel felt uncomfortably silent as he looked away, avoiding eye contact with Sissel. That difficult, huh? Sissel scowled and gently reached for the tr golden trophy cup left on his bedside by the remnant. He brushed his fingers over the Herschel McDermott on the plaque, his gaze hardening. You don't have to say anything. I think I have a pretty good picture of what happened. The culinary contest. You flew across the country and attended the finals shortly after my mother had me. My grandparents, Debra's, visited wa here while you were gone and killed her after finding out that she didn't have any money. They took everything in the cabin, including the baby, me. Sissel paused and looked up at staring at the trophy. That's basically what happened, I'm pretty sure. Herschel's head hung low with shame as he avoided an eye any eye contact. Yikes! Ooh, fucking took the words out of fucking Herschel's mouth, and he is a silent, sad boy. Ooh, yikes! His brow shook as he tried to hold in whatever he was feeling. I wanted to tell you for so long. When I found you on the streets of the kid, I immediately knew. I thought the world had given me another chance. So, I did everything I could to take care of you from then on. But, I was so scared that you would hate me for everything that happened to you. And so you decided to hide it. The bitter edge to Sissel's voice cut like a knife. He's a bitter bitch and we're here for it! <laughs> yeah, I get that part, but there's something else that 
just doesn't click. Herschel's eyes widen. He gulped and looked up, shoulders shaking. What do you mean? My mother was killed by the debtors because she didn't have any money left. They probably thought that she was refusing to pay and got violent. There wasn't a reason to kill as she was still copying off dough, right? You figure Cecilia Bradley would save up some money in case this happened, right? But she didn't. Allegedly. There was a long, tense pause. Yo! Fucking Cecil here playing the ultimate detective. What the fuck? <laughs> Herschel's fist was gripped so tightly that his knuckles turned white. Ooh, girl. Cecil held the trophy up to the light, examining it closely. And then he turned towards Herschel. I'm not like... Herschel, where did you get the money to fly to the Nationals? Yo, I can't. I can't fucking do this. If I'm correct about this, Herschel took the money that Cecilia was saving in order to go to nationals. She didn't have any left. She physically could not pay, and then they killed her. Yo, Herschel. That's... Yo! There's no fucking way. Please tell me it's not. Don't- d tell me that that's a fucking lie. The trips travel- uh, the trips travel costs aren't covered by- uh, for contenders in the competition. So where the hell did you get the money to go there? You were hardly swimming in money at that point in your life. It's- not what it sounds like. Is it though? Is it? Oh, what the? F Dude, what the fuck? Oh god. Cecil stood up from his seat and glared at Herschel with absolute fury. You were just like me. So damn desperate to win this trophy, wanting to make something of yourself. Except I didn't steal money from my only remaining family for a damn trophy. That's not- Am I wrong? Oh, yo! Oh my god, so if this is tr If this is fucking- Oh my god. Dude, I fucking can't with this. I fucking can't with this bitch. Herschel gaped in stunned dread before hanging his head in shame. I- No. You're right. My sister was a good person. A better one than I could ever be. I thought this was a chance to prove myself. I thought if I could just win the competition, I could use the prize money to pay back all of our family's debt. No, Herschel, don't fucking cry, but... In the end, I won, but... Cecil gritted his teeth and let the trophy in his hands. You won. But in the end, my mother was murdered, and I was thrown into a dumpster. My family, my childhood, all my time scavenging and begging on the streets. All for this damn cup. <laughs> Yo. I can understand why Cecil is so angry and upset, because for him, just to like win the trophy, he didn't need that. But now hearing the- Oh, dude, I'm not okay. Why- was Shirokoi? What the fuck? I was just about to get a little bit of hope. With an utterly disgusted snarl, Sissel smashed the trophy into the ground. The golden shards scattered across the wooden attic floor as Sissel stormed out of the room, not once glancing towards Herschel's direction. I, I just wanted to help. Sissel paused and spoke quietly through his gritted teeth. I don't want to speak to you again. I can make my way through life without your help. Whoa! Sissel! In fact, your help is the last thing I need. Without another word, Sissel left the cafe. Day 14. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> oh 
What the fuck? Day 15. Burn. Burn. Whoa. Oh. I'm going to pause the episode there. What the fuck? <laughs> I fucking, I fucking can't, dude. What the? Oh, dude. Shit. I fucking can't with this fucking series. Thank you all so much for watching. Um, my name is Veed. I hope that you had a wonderful time watching this. I hope that you had a wonderful time watching me actually get fucking anxious watching this fucking clash, this fucking debate happening right before my eyes. Yo, this fucking <laughs> detective work. Um, yeah. <laughs> Make sure to hit that like, comment, subscribe buttons down below, you know, help a fellow YouTuber out. Make sure to hit that notification bell so in that way you don't miss up on any of my uploads. And I will see you in the next episode. Goodbye!